Since the 15-inch MacBook Air came out a couple months ago, so many people have been calling it the perfect laptop, or the best laptop, or the best laptop Apple has ever made, or some variation of that. When I reviewed it, I thought it was a good laptop, and I started to feel weird that so many other people were calling it the perfect laptop. Well, I realized that those people are just wrong, and the real perfect laptop is the 14-inch MacBook Pro. Almost. Yes, this is the 14-inch M2 Max MacBook Pro, and it is just about perfect, but honestly, I think that designation also fits with the M1 Pro and Max versions of the 14-inch as well, since they really are so similar. I've been using Apple computers since the late 80s, starting with the Apple II, and I got my first Mac in the mid-90s, which was a Mac Color Classic. That thing had a 9-inch, 256-color display, and I loved it. And since then, I've had a lot of Macs, and I can honestly say that this has been my favorite. And not just because it's one of the newest, my favorite Mac desktop was my iMac G4. But this 14-inch MacBook Pro checks all of my boxes, starting with the design. And really, what would an Apple product be without a great design? The design of this 14-inch model follows all of the usual Apple design cues of the last few years with the rounded corners and the flat top and bottom. And of course, it's all aluminum. You can easily open the lid on this MacBook with one finger, and on the inside, you get this beautiful contrast between the bright silver finish and the black of the keyboard well and the bezels of the display, which just makes things pop. And yes, silver is the best color. Debate me in the comments. Even holding this thing feels good. Closing the lid and picking it up reveals the solid build of this machine, which just feels premium. And the rounded bottom edge feels like it was designed for the curve of your fingers. I feel like all of the dimensions of this 14-inch MacBook are just correct, including like the distance between the front of the laptop and the keyboard. It's the right distance to make typing on this computer comfortable versus the 15 and 16-inch models of MacBooks that have this longer, deeper design that puts stress on my wrist. I find that the wedge shape on the regular classic 13-inch MacBook Air is probably the most comfortable to type on because that sloped front edge means you can just rest your arm on it without having anything dig into your wrist. But the 14-inch Pro and the M2-based MacBook Air are probably a close second. And the last thing I want to say about the design is that this is still a good size for travel. It's almost the same size as a 13-inch laptop. It's about the same weight as the 15-inch MacBook Air. It's going to fit in any backpack, and it fits okay on airplane tray tables, so this is also a good travel companion. Now, I do want to talk about the ports, but first, I want to thank today's sponsor, Ugreen. The Ugreen Nexode 65-watt 7-in-1 charging station can help simplify your charging needs. This is a high-speed GAN charger that can charge up to three AC-powered devices and up to four USB devices. And with GAN, you get a more energy-efficient and cooler operating charger. The USB-C ports can charge at up to 65 watts each, which is great for many laptops and high-powered devices, while the USB-A ports can each charge at up to 18 watts for phones, tablets, and other gadgets. Unlike other USB chargers, this Ugreen 7-in-1 has three AC ports, which means you can easily connect other desk accessories like a work lamp, air purifier, or even a printer. This charger is also packed full of safety features like short circuit, overcurrent, and overload protection, along with protection from ground faults and temperature. Oh, and I also want to point out that there's a power switch on the back, which can be used to easily shut down or disconnect devices when not in use. So if you're looking for a powerful charger for your desk or work setup, Check out this 65 watt 7 in 1 today using the link and code in the description below. And my thanks to Ugreen for sponsoring this video. Apple spent so many years just reducing the ports on laptops and to an extent, the desktops, that we were just left with the bare minimum of I.O. And that seemed okay for some regular consumers, but for many professional uses of a computer, it felt user hostile, as Neelai from The Verge has said about headphone jacks. It required spending more money on dongles that served usually a single purpose or a dock just to get one or two things that you needed. With the 14-inch and 16-inch MacBooks, Apple finally reversed course and gave professionals a good compromise. Three Thunderbolt 4 ports is a good start as long as you use USB-C or Thunderbolt, along with a dedicated video out port on the side, which can do 8K or even high refresh 4K, an SD card slot reader for some of the most common video and photo tools, and a separate dedicated charging port with MagSafe so you didn't have to use up one of your actual I.O. ports for just power. As a professional or a creator, we're never going to be fully happy with the ports that we get. We're always going to want more for those heavy workloads. But for most work or work on the go, the ports in the MacBook Pro are probably the right ports. I can get everything I need done with the ports on the 14-inch. Now, the speakers on the 14-inch Pro are great. I have no complaints. Physics does make them not quite as good as the 16-inch Pro, but 
They are loud and sound good without distortion, and they are simply better than the 15-inch Air when compared side by side. The display on the 14-inch MacBook Pro is simply great. It is a 14.2-inch display, which fits right between the 13 and the 15-inch MacBook Air, although slightly closer to the 13. And just like with the Airs, these screens get bright, like really bright, up to 500 nits in regular use, which is brighter than most people need in most situations. It will work in any lighting situation you're probably going to find yourself in, except for maybe direct sunlight. The display can also get up to 1600 nits with HDR content, where the Air just can't do this, which makes movies and shows just look stunning on this computer. I brought this laptop with me on a trip a couple of weekends ago where we stayed in a friggin' treehouse, and at night I popped this guy open to watch a couple of shows, and I'm just always amazed every time I watch a video on this computer. It just looks so good. I can't believe what it can do. And now we can move to performance of this 14-inch MacBook Pro, which is good, like really good. Now I actually have the M2 Max version of this laptop, which comes with a 12-core CPU, a 30-core GPU, and I upgraded the storage and the memory to two terabytes and 32 gigabytes. So yeah, of course the performance on this guy is pretty good. And do I need all that performance? No, no, I do not. But I love having the overhead. And if I had to, I could easily use the base model M2 Pro MacBook Pro with the 10 core CPU and 16 core GPU with 16 gigabytes of memory and a 512 gigabyte SSD. It's a lot of specs. In fact, I did do that with the M1 Pro version for about six months. Even on that machine, I could do everything I needed to for my day job, YouTube, and any other computing needs. The base M2 Pro is probably the right spec for me. So if the performance helps make this or get this close to a perfect laptop, you also need to consider the price. And we've been able to find these at up to $250 off the base model 14 inch MacBook Pro. Yeah, Amazon had the base model 14 inch on sale last week for just $1,750, which is an amazing deal for this computer. So if you're looking to buy new, check the link in the description below for the best price. But if you're willing to go refurbished, you can actually get the base model from Apple for that same $1,700 as the upgraded 15 inch MacBook Air. Now, at the beginning of this video, I called this the perfect laptop, almost. There are a few things that can make this laptop even better. One, the notch. It's stupid. And losing icons up there when I'm working just sucks. Just add additional screen size or bezels or something to make the notch go away, or at least give us face ID or a better camera, which is number two. The camera still just kind of sucks in 2023. They do an okay job with dynamic range, but my face is incredibly soft. You can't see any detail, which, you know, maybe that's a good thing. But a lot of times it's splotchy and there's usually a lot of grain, even in decent light. And the whole thing just feels like a webcam from years ago. It doesn't feel like it's a 1080p camera. Three, the keyboard material is cheap and it wears too quickly, leaving shiny spots all over the keyboard. And no, it's not grease. Check out my previous video for more info. Four, ProMotion gives us the promise of high frame rates and smoother motion that can also reduce frame rates for better video or to save on power. But in practice, I'm not seeing this smoother motion. Here's an example of the studio display, which runs at 60 Hertz, captured at 240 frames per second. And here's an example of the 14 inch at, well, I don't know how many Hertz, also captured at 240 frames per second. Can you see a difference? Also, in this test, a Chromium-based browser is able to get 120 hertz, but Safari is not. So I'm not sure if applications just aren't optimized or taking advantage of the ProMotion display or what's going on here. And five, this M2 Max MacBook Pro runs a bit warmer than I like, and I feel it all the time when I'm using it, especially when editing video. And of course, this is more on me than them. If I went with the base model M2 Pro, like I talked about before, it would be cooler and a non-issue. Will it ever be perfect? I don't know that my personality will ever let it be perfect because there's always going to be something that I want, but these fixes get me a bit closer. I do know that this is a more perfect laptop for me than the 15 inch MacBook Air. So anyway, the 14 inch MacBook Pro is almost the perfect laptop, at least for me. It has the performance design and features that I need to get my work done and your laptop may have other requirements. So let me know in the comments down below what your perfect laptop is. And if the MacBook Air is more your style, check out this video right over here, comparing the 13 and 15 inch MacBook Air to help you decide which one to get. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.